Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel. I'm G Decoder. If you guys are new to my channel, I pretty much do Lico style questions and try to explain things in the most simplest way possible. And uh, today I have a very interesting problem for you guys. You know, um, it's called the number of islands, right? So let's read the problem statement. So it says, uh, given a n by n 2D grid, right, of maps of ones and zeros, right? The ones they represent land. And the zero represent water, right? And they said it says to return the number of islands, right? All right. It says an island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically, right? It says we may we may assume all four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water, right? Pretty much they're saying that the um, the ones they represent water and the zeros they no the one represent land and the zeros represent water, right? And it says you know. Uh, Pretty much, you know, there's water surrounding the, you know, the edges of the grid, right? Pretty much, you know, if you go above the grid, that's water. Below the grid, that's water. To the left, the grid, that's water. And to the right up the grid, that's water, right? All right, cool. So we got all the stuff that we need, right? So now, uh, let's go through this example, right? So pretty much, you're saying that, uh, so we got a piece of land, right? And then lands are form, right? So if you got uh, uh, another land that's right next to it, right? adjacent to it, right? Directly adjacent to it, that means that it's part of the same island, right? That's the lands, the land that are connected to each other, they form all like an island, right? So we know this, those two things are just part of the same island, right? Because connected to it, this one's part of the same, uh, this one's part of the same island because you know they're all connected to each other, and then this one as well is connected to that one, which means part of the same island, right? And then same thing for this one, this one's connected to that one, which means part of the same big island, right? And that's why, um. We have a one big, and just like this one connected to this one, this one's connected to that one, right? So that's why we have a big um, island, right? So pretty much one big island, right? And there's no other ones, right? So all the ones are connected to each other, right? In a way, in one go, all right? So now, this particular example, right? That, uh, th there's three islands, right? Why? Because this one, right? Once we, this one's connected to this one. That's a land that's connected to this land, right? It's part of the same island, which is connected to that land. Just connected to this land, right? So that's that's one island, right, by itself. And then this one is uh, all by itself, right? It's still an island, right? Uh, because it's on its own. It's a small island, but nonetheless, still an island, right? And then uh, this, those two are connected to, to each other, so that means that they're part of the same island, right? And then uh, which uh, would give us a total of three islands, right? So uh, this one would have been this one could have been part of this big island, right? Which is consisted of those four, uh, if there was a one here and a one there, right, it would have been connected to this one, right? So it would make it part of that island, Since, but since it's a zero, so it's not going to be part of the island, unfortunately. All right, guys, so once we have that now, so, um, we're, so the way we're going to approach this problem, right, uh, we're going to need to iterate through the board, right? And how can we iterate through the board? is by using two for loops, right? So one for loop that's gonna help us iterate through every row, right? And then another for loop to iterate through all the uh, columns, right? All the elements in that row, right? So let's say we had this one, we want to go to this one, right? We need another for loop to do that, right? So um, yeah, that's gonna be um, beneficial to uh, uh, solving this. So now, so this one, means that this is row zero, right? How, how do we reference this particular character on the board, right? This is row zero, index zero, right? And then how do we reference this one? It's row zero, right? Column one, right? So this is this is what it is. So pretty much I'm gonna be using a I and J, right? I to signify the column that we at, we're at, right? And then the J is gonna be the column that we're at, right? So the I is gonna be for the row, right? The particular row that we're at, either this one, this one, or this one, or and uh, and J is gonna be helpful to let me know which column. Is it mind this column or this one or that one, right? So yeah. So now that we know how to iterate through the board, right, and we know how to reference a particular character on the board. Now the next uh, thing that we need to worry about now is to uh, the exploration that we're going to do, right? So there's a good algorithm for that guy. It's called a depth first search, right? A depth first search can be applied to graph, trees, and also matrices, right? So it's an extremely uh, important algorithm that you guys need to know if you guys are preparing for interviews. So 
we, this problem can, can also be solved using breadth search, but I don't think it's that intuitive, right? It's more intuitive to use the depth of search to explore all the different paths, right? So pretty much uh, once we encounter a land, right, we're gonna do exploration on that. All We're gonna do exploration on the left, right, ab uh, above us and below us, right? We're doing that because this, they're telling us that we can only go horizontally or vertically, right? We can't go diagonally. So if there, if there's a land next to us, we're gonna account for it as well. So we're gonna keep exploring until we see all the land that's uh, adjacent to each other, right? And then account, account for them and uh, and explore on them as well, right? To see which one they're connected to, so on and so forth. So they're all gonna explore all the different path, all four paths above, below, right, left. They're all gonna do the same thing, right? And then. Yeah, once there's no more land that's adjacent to us, right? We just come back and we said, all right, we explore all the all part of this island, right? Let's see if there's another island somewhere that's standalone or that we can explore on as well. So this is this is how the algorithm is gonna work, right, guys? So let's get into it real quick. So um, first things first, guys, uh, we're gonna have um, a count variable that's gonna keep track of the number of times we had to explore, like you know we. How many islands there are, right? So it's the end count is go to zero, right? And then ne next thing that we need to do is to have the number of rows, right? That's uh, inside of the grid, right? The number of rows is going to be done by doing grid that length, right? Then the end number of columns, right? It's going to be uh, by doing grid a uh, zero, right? All right, so grid that length. All right, so nice. So now, now that we have that, guys. So uh, yeah, pretty much this is the number of rows, right? Number of rows, boom, boom, boom. Then this is the number of columns, right? So I, I got the first row, the length of it, right? And they're all the same. They're all gonna have the same number of columns. So that's why I can, I can do that, right? So now that I have that now, right? So I talked about the two for loops, right? To help us, to help me iterate through the whole thing. So now, guys, the next thing. Well, so we're gonna do an I. Go to zero. I is less than um, the number of rows, right? The total number of rows, right? I plus plus. And now the next thing that we're gonna have, right? We're gonna have in J. Go to zero, right? And then J is less than the number of columns, right? J plus plus, right? Now the next thing that we're gonna do, right? Once we're gonna do a check, right? Once we encounter, once we encounter, right? So grid. Like I said, uh, remember, like I said, how we reference a particular character on the grid? We do I and J, right? So initially, it's gonna be zero, 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 right? So it was gonna first encounter this part of the land, right? So once we encounter a one, right? The char one, right? Char one, because it's a char grid, right? So that's why we put, uh, if it counters, uh, if, it's equal to, if it equals a one, then what we're gonna do, right? We're gonna increment the count, right? To one plus plus, right? To say, all right, we, found a, a land, and then we're gonna do exploration on that, right? And then we, we're gonna call a function DFS, right? Where we're gonna pass in the grid, uh, the, and then the uh, coordinates to let us know where on the grid that we need to explore on, right? So we're gonna pass in a zero, zero, right, initially. So now, the next thing that's left for us to do is to start writing the algorithm, right? So we do public, all right, public void, right? DFS, that's the name of the function that we said. All right, so we're just gonna copy that right here, right? Grid, right, and then we paste it right there, right? And then we, we pass in eight i and j, right? The coordinates, right? And then now, guys, uh, since we're gonna be doing exploration on all of the, the different path, right? Up, down, left, and right. Now, what we need to do, right? We need to make sure that we don't go out of bounds, right? If we're gonna try to reference a, uh, you know, a specific particular index that's out of bounds, right? Say, you know, we go uh, too far to the left, right? We can go out of bounds, or too far up, we can go out of bounds, or too far to the right, we go out of bounds, right? So let's write the the um, edge cases, right? So now, uh, what, what we're we gonna do, right? So uh, we're gonna check if i is out of bounds. So if you went all too far to the right, right? Then we, we would, um, that's that's a bad thing, right? We can not go too far to the right. And then also, if we went uh, too far, um, 
Yeah, guys. So the, the, the I meant to say um this one pretty much I'm saying that um if you went too far to the uh, too far you know <laughs> too far below right and too far above right and also now if you um went too far to the right which is grid of um grid of zero right which is the row right the the number of so if you went too far to the right. And also, if you went too far to the left, right? If you went to like, you know, index negative one, right? Column is equal to negative one, that's out of bounds. You, you, won't, you won't be able to explore in that, right? So to not get those kind of errors, we're gonna, you know, um, you know um, not do the exploration on that uh, bad path, right? And then now the next important step, right? If we encounter a zero, right? If we encounter water, we know we cannot explore on the water, right? That's not part of the land, right? So the IJ, right? If that's equal to a zero, character zero, right? Uh, we return, right? So we're not gonna do any exploration on that path, unfortunately. And then now the next step, guys, uh, once we know that's a good path, we're gonna set it to zero, right? To signify that we've already accounted for it already. So you don't need to explore that path again because we already went that route, right? And then now once we do that, uh, we're gonna write the same thing, right? So we're gonna pass in the grid, right? And I and J, right? And then now, guys, um, it gets interesting, right? So this is where uh, all the meat of the um, problem comes into play, right? So we just copy and paste all those things real quick. So now, guys, we're gonna explore all the path, right? All like below, above, left, and right. So first things first, we're gonna explore. Uh, above us, right? Which is will be to go one row above, right? I minus one, right? And then also uh, we go, we can go one row below us, right? To explore below, right? I plus one, right? And also the J, right? We can go to J minus one to go one column uh, to the left, right? And then to, if you want to go to the right, you would go uh, J plus one, right? To explore uh, on the right side, right? So now that we would we do that. Uh, once we get here, we will return uh, the number of times it did an exploration, right? So let's run through an example real quick, right? So uh, let me try to run it real quick, and I'll see if we pass all the test cases, and, um, and then I'll explore. So let me see, number of columns. Copy that. Yeah, simple uh, mistake. So uh, yeah, we're right, we passed the test case. All right, nice, nice, nice. So uh, let me go through a quick example, right? So uh, this one's a good one. So um, so this one, right? So first things first. So we got a double for loop, right? And then so I is zero. So we had I is equal to zero, right? And then we had J. J is equal to zero now, right? So now we're gonna explore all the elements in that on, in that row now, right? Because of the J, right? So now uh, we encounter this one, right? So we like, all right, cool. Is this a one, right? It's zero, zero, one, right? It is a one. Then we increment the count, right? So we know that's gonna be at least one island, right? So we do count plus plus, and then we do the exploration. We also pass in the coordinate of the location where it is on the um, in the grid, right? So it would be zero, zero. So we we get to um, we get to uh, this, we get to that part, right? So now. Uh, we check is it out of bounds, right? So are we uh, too far to uh, below, or too far up, or too far to uh, the right, or too far to the left? Nope. Or is it equal to a zero? Nope. All right, then we could, then we're good. So we just explore. So now I turn, um, I turn on uh, this one to a zero, right? If you guys are following so far, so I turn it to a zero, right? And after I do that, I explore all the paths, right, that I'm allowed to explore, all the four paths, right? So this one, I, I minus one, right? It explores, right? It goes it goes uh, above, right? So out of bounds, right? So it, it's this case, I is less than zero, so it returns from the recursive call. Then it explores below, right? It goes below, right? Once I get below, I explore all the paths that there are nearby, right? And this is how it's able to do that for every one of them, right? 
So yeah, guys, uh, this is a very interesting problem, right? The, this uh, approach can be used in so many different problems using DFS, guys. I, I want you guys to be able to um, solve a problem like that. You know, like word search, uh, number of connect, uh, connected components, or other problems just like this one, guys, that you guys can use the same algorithm to um, explore and do DFS on them, right? On whatever data structure that's given to you. So, uh, yeah, guys, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. And uh, if I did a pretty good job explaining, uh, let me know in the comment section and like this video. And um, if you guys are new here, make sure you guys subscribe because I will be uploading a lot more videos like this. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.